Adrian Wong. We're here on day three of FOLDA, the Festival of Live Digital Art. I'm the Artistic Director of Spiderweb Show Performance, and I'm here with the co-curators of the festival. And I'm going to start, I'm going to turn to my right and head and, over uh, to I'm you. Sure. Yeah, I'm Sarah Garten Stanley, and I'm one of the co-curators. And then I'm going to just jump over uh, to my right. And uh, who are you? Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Michael Wheeler, the third co-curator. You. Um, and here. So ordinarily, what's that? No, you go. Well, I said was just going to say that ordinarily we do like a physical description of ourselves. So I'm going to do that quickly right now. Um, I'm half Chinese Canadian, half French Canadian with uh, kind of messy, dark black hair that's uh, short. And I'm wearing a bright blue t-shirt that says Folda on it uh, from last year's festival. How about you, Sarah? Uh, I am a um, middle-aged, middle-heighted um, uh, white woman um, who uh, from your sort of European heritage background. Um, and I um, uh, always wear, almost always wear hoodies and generally wear hats, but I don't have one on tonight. So it's, it's different. Yeah. And horn rim glasses. Mike? Um, I'm a really tall white guy in his early 40s. I'm also um, not wearing a hat, although I usually wear a hat. Uh, and I'm doing that because my wife showed my daughter a picture of my Twitter profile and her comment was, Daddy had hair? So I realized that I should try to, I should try to, try to just live the, as the person that I am. <laughs> uh, so the two of you, <laughs> the two of you tonight are in Kingston, and I'm actually uh, two hours behind in Banff, Alberta. So Sarah, do you want to explain what's going on here and what, by what magic, we appear to be all in the same room under the fold of moon? Yeah, under the full of the moon, so great. Um, yeah, we're in what we call CDN Studio. It's something that uh, we developed a, a few years ago now. Um, uh, Joel Adria and myself um, created this space. Um, um, Joel had the uh, capacity to be able to make it happen technically, and together he and I sort of envisioned how it might work. And um, yeah, uh, we have used it for a number of different um, uh, experiments and rehearsals. Um, uh, as a director, I was really interested in finding ways that people could meet, performers could meet um, when they were in different parts of the country or for reasons of accessibility, it could be a space where they could try out certain things. And over time, um, we've also found that it's really good as a, like this, a meeting spot for people um, and other kind of fun experiments uh, with looking at the ways in which size and play and animation and stuff can happen. So it's something that we like a lot and we thought we would share it with you all tonight. Well, here we are. We've had two incredible days of programming so far. And this is the third day, um, the, the last show that just wrapped up. Uh, this World Made Itself by Miwa Matrayek. It's always so stunning to see her work. And um, I always have to, you know, shout out that she is performing that live in her living room uh, in wow. LA with her, uh, with her partner there pressing go on the computer to, to trigger those quick time animations. And it's just stunning. And then uh, before, before This World Made Itself was uh, Haven. Uh, by Murdoch Sean and Angelica Schwartz out of Montreal. And then before that was uh, May I Take Your Arm, Red Dress Productions. Another like, just like bam, 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 uh, really interesting, challenging work at times. Um, and then we started off the whole day with uh, the closing part of the Green Rooms Conversations, which was a co-creation process. I'm really curious actually, Sarah, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the spot because I wonder, like, how long did you have to work together to make that creation and, and what was that process like? Uh, well, we had together as that group about an hour and 15 minutes, I guess. Um, we had some prompts before figured out and uh, uh, and some ideas as to how we might 
you know, flow it. And Matt Rogalski, who was um, doing a lot of the live recording, um, we did that all within that time period as well. Um, so he was able to play it back. And uh, yeah, we, we set up a few things in advance, but really it was about an hour and a, an hour and a half to pull it together. Yeah. Which went really fast. <laughs> Yeah, I bet. I bet it did. Um, and how can you just remind me how many participants were there as part of that session? You know, I don't know the exact number. I have to go back and look at it. But let's say there was 30, 40, something like that. Um, no, that's actually not right. There was probably just under 30 um, in total. Um, and yeah, I mean, a, a number of them had been even there as part of the tests earlier when we were trying to figure out how to build that space for the green rooms. Um, but there was people that I met in the room at the end who I'd never met before. And that was really cool because we finished the whole sort of co-creation, this closing act by bringing finally everybody back into the same Zoom room, something we hadn't done with everyone for all of the green rooms. And then um, Georgina Riel closed it and it was extremely moving. and. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we really felt somehow like we'd managed to gather digitally. So, um, yeah, thanks for asking. It was um, I look I look forward to going back and looking at it because it was there were so many things going on. I don't really know what it looked like, but I know what it felt like, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was just really struck by um, in all of these pieces, like that notion of space, like where where the performers were in relationship to my body. I mean, we're obviously mediated by the screens and cameras and all kinds of things, but certainly in Mayor Take Your Arm and the way that, um, the way that, that Alex was experiences mapping a community through, through sound and story um, was something that really stuck with me uh, through the day, just that idea of space and how it was turning up in different ways and all of these things that I saw today. Uh, Mike, is there anything that really stood out for you today? Uh, yeah, quite a bit. Maybe um, instead of just going into what's going on there, I'll bring up a couple of tweets. And, and one of my tweets is about Alex's show, and I wanted to talk about that. But before I get there, we all need to lean to the side so that we can talk about this tweet here by Andrew Burke. Uh, and uh, Andrew says, I also just did a run around the Citadel and across the bridge and recorded on Strava because it's going to be part of some kind of distributed digital art project with Spiderweb Show. Hope they like the star shape. Uh, yes, Andrew, thank you. We did enjoy the star shape. Uh, and I bring that up because, you know, something we haven't talked about yet is the digital run. And for those of you watching who don't know, I think he's probably disappeared the tweet. We can probably come back. Oh, okay. Um, can come back into the poll. Yeah. We can come back in the frame. Uh, the digital run asked um, people from across anywhere in the world who gained, joined an exercise on uh, earlier in the week for one day uh, to attach your data to an app. And then two artists are have spent part of the week interpreting that data and creating art out of it. And so um, that tweet we saw was just one of 178 different people who contributed their data to this project uh, in seven countries. And over that single day, all of those participants logged uh, 1,375 kilometers of activity. Um, so those artworks will be revealed tomorrow on folded.ca uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, and so uh, come check them out there. We'll be doing some, some social media action about them, but, but interesting to see what all of that, that sweating turned into in, in, in the art world. Uh, the other tweet that I wanted to bring up is is just one um, that's a quote of Alex uh, Bulmer from uh, May I uh, Take Your Arm. And uh, it's just a quote. It says, uh, this piece is about my affection for interdependence. Um, and it was something she said really early in the piece. And I felt like uh, it was a real through line to, to how I understood um, not just what the piece was about, but maybe also what it seemed like Alex was mourning in that piece, those long shots of Alex. And 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 um, when when this piece existed at Fulda as, as something we experienced um, together physically, it felt quite hopeful and, and today's felt less hopeful. And, and I feel because, you know, um, that interdependence that existed at this time last year is not available to her. 
Yeah, yeah I mean, I'd, I'd love to say uh, something about that piece too, because I felt, um, you know, the magic that uh, that is Alex, and I think the that core group of collaborators, they, they did such beautiful work. And, you know, that was a real, to use that over word pivot, but they really, you know, they really found something truthful uh, and reframed the question in such a profound way. And I was struck by how many times I laughed aloud, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's something that I think is truly difficult to achieve in, uh, in this medium. Um, something about the way in which they worked was so true and proximate. I felt, I felt close, you know, even though it was a piece about kind of not being able to, to get across in some ways. Um, anyway, I just, I, I thought it was really successful and I, I hope they continue to think about ways to tell that story and to keep reframing that story because it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, when you say that, it just, the, the word that comes up for me is love. Like I can feel the, the love and appreciation that those four collaborators have for each other. And it felt like that's the thing that held true in the center of it. Um, and, and this, and allowed for, for kind of investigation and, and digging, but also playfulness and whimsy. And, and it's that, that those people that you can laugh with when you're in the worst times because they're your buds. Um, yeah. Yeah. Lots of, there's tons of love today in all of these pieces, tons of like, just really like, uh, beautiful, gentle, sweet humanity. <laughs> it's like almost too much, <laughs> almost too much. Like you find someone to hug. It's really, it's really <laughs> tricky right now. Uh, let's we're, talk a little bit about tomorrow, though. Oh, I'm sorry, I talked I, over you. We're allowed to hug in Ontario as of today in your ten circle of ten. Within your circle of ten, like you get yeah. to increase your circle of huggers. Yeah. Okay. I hugged my neighbor uh, yesterday, so I guess she has to be in my circle now. I'm doing a couple of things. One, I'm starting to feel like we're towering over. And so I tried to sort of sit way down. And so I'm sorry if it looks uh, weird. But the other yeah, thing is, cool. yeah, about that thing about Ontario, um, as uh, as Adrian said, we're in Kingston. Or I'm in Kingston right now. And I was downtown at uh, like 5 o'clock. And it was like the pandemic had never happened. Even though uh, people lined up like chalk marks of, of, um, behind one another, there was still a lineup to get into the ice cream place. It would just happen to be like, you know, six feet apart. And um, all the boys were out on the patios and uh, the vans were coming by saying, oh, back again, let's do some, like, it was just like this kind of crush of, um, yeah, so this hypothetical time here in Kingston anyway, where I wonder if people will just go right back or will they be too, it's like, no, it was just like right back. People were, it was really shocking. And, and just one last thing on that, when we were planning this festival, um, there were so many questions about what would this time be like? What would be happening from June 10th to June 13th? What would the world, you know? And so it's just so interesting to be living in it and going, well, here, this is what it's like today. And in Alberta, um, was it today that up to 50 can get? Like there's these extraordinary shifts that are, yeah, occurring. Yeah, you can go swimming. <laughs> wow. Like the pools and the, everything's open. They just basically opened everything uh, oh. with, you know, some adjustments. But I don't know. It feels fast to me. Uh, but uh, yeah. I'm just, so I, I guess I'll just stay in my house for a bit little, a bit longer and watch some great shows tomorrow since yeah. we have some, hey, that's my segue. So M Michael's already talked about the digital run. There's going to be a pod plays walk party. So pod plays are audio plays that have been written for specific walks in Vancouver. And uh, the New World Theatre Artistic Director Chelsea Haberman is going to take us on a walk 
uh, and show us what she sees as we're listening to those audio plays together. Uh, we have part two of Haven. So those who tuned in today will see the second part where uh, actors take on the roles of the, of the strangers who meet. We have, oh my gosh, I'm blanking a little bit. We have Isque. oh my gosh, oh my gosh. A beautiful performance. Uh, and I'm allowed to let at the theater center, the Isque and uh, Chamber th Trio, is that right, Mike? Is a trio with her? It is a trio. Yeah. <laughs> it's a trio. And then we're going to wrap up with uh, Miwa Matreik's newest piece, which is called Infinitely Yours. And for those who've caught her work this uh, past uh, tonight and then two nights ago, just like stunning, amazing. So come check it out. Anything from the two of you before we sign off tonight? Did I miss anything? Yeah, uh, you didn't miss anything, but just you brought up the, the notion of love. And uh, I feel that with Mia's work. I, I felt that in Haven too, I should say, like this, this, you know, urge towards it. And then sometimes this incredible expression of it. And, you know, Mia's what feels like absolute love for the world that she uh, gets to to live in or sees, or there's, it's just it's so beautiful and it's so filled with a kind of a, a love or a devotion, maybe devotion. It's really remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. Any last words from you? Man, I'm so excited about Isque. I'm obviously excited about all the programming, but you know, two things about the Isque uh, performance that I'm really psyched about. One is like, maybe something has happened in a Canadian theater since the pandemic started, but I haven't heard of it. Like it's really the first activation of a theater since this all started. And so I'm so excited that we're part of that. And then Isque is performing new material and, and, and uh, normally Isque performs with more of a band and she's playing with this classical trio. And so, uh, I th I'm just so excited that such an important artist is bringing new uh, work uh, to to reactivate our theaters, and I think it will be an, an important moment historically. And how yeah. wonderful and ironic maybe that uh, the Festival of Live Digital Art is working to reactivate um, theatrical space. And uh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. You can't pin us down. Yeah, yeah. You can try, but you can't. Uh, thank, thanks, everybody, for sticking with us tonight. And we hope to see you uh, tomorrow night for all of our last day um, events and shows from Banff and Kingston. Good night.